Porsche. Look to Porsche. Porsche. VW cylinders. Actually, this really doesn't look that bad, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, but it's not right. Hey guys, here's a quick problem that most people don't think about when switching to big bore cylinders. How do you deflect the air so the bottom of the cylinder gets cool? Seems like a simple problem. Just slap on the original sheet metal. Oh, but wait, those don't fit at all. The cylinders are too big and the spring clips have nothing to grab onto because the fins surround the studs. Huh. Okay, so what do you do? That's the question I had to ask myself after my dad and I designed our big bore aluminum cylinders. After having seen some of the other aluminum big bore cylinders available, we thought, how hard could it be to design some? However, instead of copying cylinders already available for Corvair, we drew our inspiration from the other side of the pond, Porsche. Specifically, the three liter cylinders with Nicosil plating from the later model air-cooled 911s. We wanted to take the fin shape and spacing and adapt them for the Corvair stud placement. My dad machined the prototype on the lathe in-house, and the full prototype set took a mere 30 hours to machine. Suffice to say, making them in-house was not feasible beyond the first set. So we sent off the CAD model to be machined in the US, and this is what we got back. 92 millimeter bore, 3 8 wall, 75 thousandths thick fins. The only problem now was that the quality of the cylinders was so high that the air deflectors would have to be the same quality. I really couldn't and didn't want to copy the stock air deflectors. The initial inspiration I found was with older air deflectors that my dad had made, which had a very nice mounting mechanism with a wave spring that forced the air deflectors against the cylinders using the central cylinder. But these were quite labor intensive to make and not easily producible. I again looked to Porsche. One of the first examples I saw was on a late model air cooled Porsche with air deflectors that bolted to the case. I didn't see a way to add a boss to the case to bolt the new air deflectors. So I thought, why not combine the two ideas and create a new type of air deflector? So I used the fin profile of the cylinders and modeled the new air deflectors. And here they are. So this is the version for the big bore aluminum cylinders, which you can see also modeled in this same workspace. The air deflectors follow the contour of the fins very nicely because they're based directly on the fins of the cylinders. There are only five unique pieces to these air deflectors two of which are the large and small deflectors that are designed to be fastened together to create the central deflectors that have the slots for the wavy springs to go through at the top. The ends have the short deflectors duplicated and there's one extra short deflector because it needs to be mirrored from the rest. There are two different aluminum angle brackets, one at the front, one at the back, that connect all the air deflectors. So just the wavy spring in the center is able to hold the whole thing up. This is the same general design that I modeled for the VW cylinders as well, but they follow the contour of those fins instead of the big bore aluminum cylinder fins. With these models, I could now order them and get them assembled. This is easier said than done because there are always little details that you forget about. So I hope this is loud enough and there's not too much <clears throat> noise. So here's the first set of uh, air deflectors. This is actually the, probably the third one that I made. Uh, but what's really interesting about these is that they fit the VW cylinders. So they have a very large deflection here and they also follow the contour of the cylinder very well. So these fit the VW cylinders. This one uh, has been modified quite a bit because the initial design didn't capture all the features. So a couple things, uh, I had to notch this or, or cut diagonal in this to fit the dipstick tube. And then I had to cut these off to also fit the dipstick tube. I had to put big reliefs in these 
to fit the head studs. I've already fixed this in the CAD model. And I've also modeled one of these. I don't know if I'll actually make the, these specifically because uh, it is really easy. I just used a, a thing to cut it. I mean, it's kind of crude, uh, but it, it, it looks pretty, it looks pretty sick. Uh, so actually now I've got to assemble a different set. This is actually, I just realized this is not the right set. This is for the other VW cylinders, uh, which have a big step in them. They're right actually down here. So these, a little sneak peek of, right, these, they have a very weird jump in the cylinder fins right there. So you can't use this for a curved deflector correctly. If I hold it like that, hey, there we go. They don't fit correctly, right? There's a big jump and there's a big gap that forms right down here. Actually, this really doesn't look that bad, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, but it's not right. This is right. So this one instead contours to it uh, very nicely. And so it, it makes sure that the air stays, it prevents the air from just flying right through and it redirects it up into these bottom fins at the bottom of this. And once it's all tucked up in there, it's very nice. So I am going to put this back in the bag. This is the worst part of working with these. There we go. Uh, I will assemble one of these and I'll show you how I get from uh, this guy by himself to this full thing with the brackets and everything. Uh, it's quite simple, but it's a, it's a lot of drilling because I haven't put holes in any of these for rivets, which I'm using handheld rivet thing with rivets, 3 16 rivets. This is not the original plan. The original plan was to weld it. Here's actually the, the first one that my dad attempted to weld. And you can see it's uh, not good. Uh, apparently he said it was incredibly hard to do this and he had to drill through it anyway. So the single, the like butt weld that he wanted, the, or the gusset weld or whatever it's called, that he wanted to do wouldn't work. So he started riveting it and then he went, well, riveting is pretty good. So I riveted the rest of it together. So this is like the first prototype one, uh, which might go on, uh, I don't know, Big Boy Short Circuit or something. Might go on one of our engines. It's fine, but it's just not standardized or whatever. But I've got all the pieces here, right? You can see all the pieces. And so I'm gonna uh, put this together. Actually though, if you look at this guy, there's a big wedge cut out of this. So I'm gonna do the same on this one. I'm gonna put a big wedge in the bottom of this guy to get it to fit around the big boss thing that's on the side of the case where one of the heater duct sheet metal pieces mounts to it. Uh, and I will, you'll be able to see that uh, at some point. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think I have to machine that before I do anything. So I will do that and then I will, you'll come back and you'll see this is done and I'll do the thing. Assembly time. So this really is quite a simple process of assembly. I first need to cut the end of the back angle bracket because it would get in the way of the boss on the side of the case. Then I line up the tall air deflectors in the center of the front bracket so that when I drill them, they are spaced out correctly. I have to use a lot of clamps because otherwise the whole thing moves around a lot.
Once the first two are lined up, it's really easy to drill the ends and install the rivets. The whole process takes around 30 minutes to complete. And now they're done. These are ready to be installed on an engine. And here's the finished product. They look pretty flimsy, but when you hold them, they are actually very sturdy. The riveting turned out great, and one of the problems I worried about was that because it's all riveted together, the rivets would allow it to move a little and make it wobbly. But that didn't happen, and it feels like one connected part. When it's mounted on the cylinders, the wavy spring has enough force to keep the whole assembly firmly in place. There's enough force to make it quite hard to pull the deflectors away from the cylinders, meaning they will stay in place to deflect the air while driving. Also, the way the deflectors follow the contour of the fins make them look very sleek. I personally think they are a game changer for keeping the big bore aluminum cylinders cool. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and if you have any questions, leave them there too. I uh, hope you found some of this a little interesting, and if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, so I know you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.